Archbishop Kiprianos was born in Strobolos in 1756. At around seven years of age, he entered into monastic life at the calling of a family relative, who was the Ponomos of the monastery of Panagia Majera, Archbishop Haralamos. There, he began his formal studies in the school of the monastery, and in 1768, he was blessed to have as a teacher one of the students of the great Evgenios Vulgaris. In 1769, he goes to Nicosia, where for three years he studies higher letters at the Greek Museum of Nicosia, which had been founded, nurtured, and supported by the archbishops Philotheos, Paisios, and Chrysanthos. The museum was housed inside the building of the old archdiocese. Subsequently, he returned to the monastery, where in 1781 he was tonsured as a deacon by Archbishop Chrysanthos. Two years later, he accompanied his family relative, Archmandrite Karalambos, to Moldavian Valachia, staying at Iasi while organizing fundraisers for the economic support of the Panagia Mahera Monastery. The monastery had come under financial debts due to the harsh and heavy taxation imposed, as often was the case, by the Turkish governors in addition to the debt incurred due to the maintenance work required to keep the monastery from crumbling. During his stay at Iasi, Kiprianos was welcomed by the Fanariot ruler of the region, Mikhail Sutsos, and was promoted to the rank of priest, assuming the primary service to the ruler's imperial shrine at Iasi. In parallel, he continued his academic studies at the Imperial Academy of Iasi. He stayed at Iasi for 20 years. Together with Archmandrite Karalambos, he returned to the monastery on Cyprus in 1802. They brought with them many dedications, documents, manuscripts, ecclesiastic utensils, as well as paintings and portraits of themselves created by artists at Iasi. This saving intervention of Kiprianos persuaded the people, advocated by Bishop Chrysanthos, to recognize him and to offer him their permission to represent them at ecclesiastic and civil authorities. Kiprianos was concurrently elevated to the clerical rank of Grand Economos. In 1806, Kiprianos builds the Shrine of St. Eleftherios, 
which was annexed to the Panagia Mahera Monastery. With his own means, Kiprianos realized the hagiography of Saint Eleftherios and Saint Stylianos, as well as Saint Charalambos, with the dedicative sentence. Greece is proud to have you as its sentinel, but so is Greek Cyprus. Now her pastor inscribes in the column of eternal memory his beseeching of your oversight to protect him and the people of Cyprus. But come quickly, you who have suffered a lot and save us all from every disease and every other persecution. In 1809, after the passing of his friend, the Draguman Kazigiorgakis Kornisiu, the sudden exile of Archbishop Chrysanthos and the Metropolitan of, of Kitiu in May of 1810, Kiprianos receives an order from the Sultan, which affirmed the decision of the island's clergy lady conference. Kiprianos is then enthroned as the Archbishop of Cyprus on the 30th of October 1810 by the retired former Archbishop of Sinai, Constantios. As an archbishop, among Kiprianos' many accomplishments and services to the people of Cyprus are the founding of schools, first in Nicosia, which today serves as the Pancyprian High School, then in Limassol and Stropolos. His many encyclicals with deep spirituality, his support and patronage of hundreds of works, hagiography, iconography, especially those of Saint Trifon, which he sent all over the island, the founding, building, and renovation and restoration of shrines and churches, and the financial support of the less fortunate of the island. The Ottoman vindictiveness, however, soon found the means to attack him through the persecutions of the weak Cypriot Christians. Under the governorship of Kuchuk Mehmet, and under the circumstance of the breakout of the revolution in Greece in 1821, the Turks of the island found the opportunity and the excuse to violently appropriate the Cypriot Christians' homes and property and to take away the freedoms they enjoyed until then. Να μεν αρκεί Κυπριαν ένα χάρι στον καιρό σου, να πάεις να φαραγγιστείς αν θέλεις το καλό σου. Πρέπει να πας, ή δε κι ανού εχάθεις δίχως άλλον. Ας έβρει μέρα το πορνό δα μέσα δα, να σε νεκρός εις την κρεμασταρκάν, είτε νεκρός των πάλων. Άνου να πάμε γλίωρα, τα μάξιν καρτεράσε. Έθελο κι όρογλου έγιον αφίω που τη χώρα, γιατί αφίω το κακό είναι να γίνει περί του. Θέλω να μείνω κι όρογλου κι ας πάνε να με σκοτώσουν. Ας με σκοτώσουν είναι μεν κι άλλοι να γλιτώσουν. Έφευκο κι όρογλου, γιατί αφίω ο φευκός μου να γεννεί θανατικόν εις τους ρωμιούς του τόπου, να βάλω τη συρτοθυλιάνη στον λαιμό του κόσμου, παρά το γέμα τους πολλούς εγκάλιων του πισκόπου. Ας πίσκο πια Κυπρία ναι μιλέτ πάσου του τόπου. Εγύρε ψάσε να σου πω πως είμαι προσταμένος από την πόρτα και κρατώ στο χέρι μου φερμάνιν. Πως έχω μια άλλη μπροστά ή μου το ψηλό διβάνιν. Τα αρκοντολώ εν τους Ρωμιούς τους μυαλούς του του τόπου να τους συνάξω μόνο μιας και να τους συσκοτώσω. Κι ακόμα αν η μπόρια των κόσμων να γυρίσω ήθελα να σφάξω τους δρομιούς ψυχή να με να αφήσω.
η ρομιοσύνη εφηλή συνόκερ του κόσμου. Κανένας δεν ευρέθηκε για να την εξελίψει. Κανένας, γιατί σέπει την που τάψει ο Θεός μου. Η ρομιοσύνη να χαθεί όντας ο κόσμος λείψει. Σφάξε μας ούλους κι ας γεννεί το γέμα μας αυλάκι. Κάμε τον κόσμο ματσεριών και τους ρομιούς τραούλια. Μα ξέρε πως σύλλαντρο, όντας σκοπή καβάτζι, τριγύρω του πετάσουν τετρακόσια Ο Τούρκος ό,τι τσέφιε και μείναν μανισί τους. Εγωνατίσαν ούλοι τους για να προσευχηθούσι. Κι ούλοι εκλαμουριστήκασι. Και τσίνοι προσευχή τους. Ήτουν που μέσα στην καρκιά την ώρα που πονούσι. Στην ιστερκάν της προσευχής, έτσι γονατισμένη, είπαν κλαμμένη η Ανά και με φωνή κομμένη. Θεέ μου και συγχώρησε τους λάσκους που μας μισούσι. Θεέ μου και ξυσκλάβωσε την άκαρη φίλη μας. Θεέ μου και στέω και χώρα μας και δέχτου την ψυχή μας. Summoning all the leaders of the Christians of the island, clergy and lady, to a meeting to listen to their recently received Sultan's edicts as a ruse, the Turkish hegemon instead proclaimed to them the capital punishments they would receive. First to be executed and first among the martyrs would be Archbishop Kiprianos. Beginning on the 9th of July, with the execution of Kiprianos, the slaughters did not end until the end of the month, resulting in more than 500 innocent people becoming martyrs of the island of Aphrodite. The Virgin Mary, the Panagia, was dressed in red and black. Homes were left empty, drenched in blood.
The slaughters began on the 9th of July, Saturday, and did not end until the end of the month. Even though the archives indicate the execution of 486 Cypriot Christians, the number is believed to exceed 500. 36, in addition, are documented to have converted to Islam as a means of salvation. However, many years later, they professed and returned to Christianity. Two hundred years later, the martyric course of the Cypriots continues. The current generation stands in awe in front of the mausoleum of the martyrs. They reminisce and remind themselves of the sacrifices made. These martyrs are held in high spiritual and moral stature, and they are role models for this generation to continue and to foster the struggles for freedom, as well as to serve as ambassadors to all people worldwide for the reunification of the blood-soaked island of Aphrodite.